Super Jockey second. Rebel Dane third on the outside of Aero Velocity. Strathmore down on the rail. Not listening to me. Takedown. Then came Big Arthur. Lucky Bubbles. Amazing kids have got plenty of work to do. They quarter in and Phenophobia. Half a length on Super Jockey. Aero Velocity. Rebel Dane. Strathmore. Amazing kids. Hunch the rail. Wider out is Big Arthur with Lucky Bubbles. Phenophobia still has it. Super Jockey. Aero Velocity. The eight year old. Eight year old rolls up now to take the lead. Aero Velocity from Phenophobia. Lucky Bubbles on the scene late. Aero Velocity in front. Lucky Bubbles trying to reach him. Aero Velocity. What a to the home corner 500 meters out beauty generation two clear romantic touch singapore sling simply brilliant cotty to the outside rise high and then seasons bloom beauty generation down to the 300 meters starts to really lift pounds away from the opposition singapore sling cotty rise high running on Purton sitting motionless three in front on beauty generation what a remarkable season it's been another incredible racing story a second champion a length and a half clear, 50-50 coming through. Nothing I like more. Southern legend, Persian Knight and Vivlos are starting to emerge out of the pack. But Beauty Generation at the 150. This is 100% pure Group 1 power. Beauty Generation 5 in front. Vivlos and Southern legend. He is invincible. Beauty Generation onto her back and then Eagle Way. A Prince of Aaron, Krakosmia cornered in front from Exalton. There's no between them. Azira, Salo and Ribbon. Here comes Lee for sure, Pakistan star, then Rostropovich further back to Eagle Way, Latrobe, followed then by Prince of Aaron, Lee's for sure, raced up to Exalted, it's Exalted and Lee's for sure, clear from Azira, then Pakistan star and Eagle Way, Exalted and Lee's for sure, a real cliffhanger in the bars, Exalted fights back and wins for Hong Kong. Hello everybody, welcome along to another interview today where I'm pleased to be joined by current Hong Kong champion jockey Zach Perton. Zach, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, talk, I think a good place to start would be last night at the Valley. You, you rode a double at the Valley last night, two winners. How would you have assessed your night last night there? Yeah, I thought I'd come away from it uh, having done pretty well. I went to the races thinking I'd be lucky to ride a winner, so I had two. That's uh, it's better than the past and... Uh, Any time you go to the races, you ride a winner, you've had a good good day. So I was happy with that. Looking at Everforce last night as well, the draw seemed to help him. Drawn on the inside, he managed to take, basically take off all, none of the paintwork on the inside, and uh, it was a good performance. Yeah, exactly. The C plus three drawn inside is a big advantage. He's also had a, he had a couple of starts, and he'd shown at his last start he was ready to be competitive in a race. But that barrier certainly helped him. He got a beautiful run and. You know, he did the rest. He's not a big horse, but he showed last night that he's got plenty of heart. And I think in time, he'll be able to get up over further ground as well. And look at the moment of power. An eight-year-old, it showed that he still has to fire inside of him at eight years old. An old boy in terms of Hong Kong racing at eight years old still be running. But it must have been great. A big smile on your face too. Suggests you were really chuffed with him winning yesterday as well. Yeah, well, it was, it was a bit of a funny story. And our entries normally come out on a Thursday and... Uh, Paul O'Sullivan didn't have a rider by Friday night when he rang me and asked if I was free, uh, which I was, of course. Um, but whenever someone's looking for a rider that late, late in the piece, uh, it generally means the horse has no chance. And his form was reflective of that. He'd run last, his last couple of starts. And being an eight-year-old, he'd lost plenty of his speed. And prior to the race, we were joking with the owners that that was going to be his last run. He was going to be retired after that. So he surprised us all by coming out and winning. But uh, he did that. And... I hope that they still retire him now. He can go in on a winning note. He's done his job. He's done very well. Looking at the season so far, you've just recently ridden your, your, your half century out of the season so far. How would you assess the current season? I think you're still a fair few off Sean Moreira in the title hunt, but how would you be assessing it so far? Yeah, I'm in a bit of a rebuilding state. My main supporter the last few seasons has been John Moore, and he retired, so um, I lost uh, some winners there and a bit of support. And, Casper Founds, who I have been riding for for a number of seasons, we decided to have a little bit of a, uh, a break, uh, if you want to put it that way. Uh, and uh, and he, unfortunately, has, has trained um, some winners this season. He's had a good season, so it's, it's good for him, but not so good for me. Um, and then some of the other trainers that normally get going early in the season uh, have struggled and not really got going as well as they normally would. So through um through those things and also i uh i hurt my hamstring early in the season it's taken a long time to recover it's still not 100 percent yet but I'm, I'm getting back to full fitness and health now 
Uh, and then I just had a, a heap of wide barriers uh, for whatever reason. The jockey club kept putting me on the outside. Maybe they were trying to test me. Uh, and you package all that up and it's just made things a little bit difficult. But I've still had a good season so far um, by anyone else's standards. I they'd think that they're flying by my, by my, my standards. I'm not where I'd like to be. Um, but, you know, that just happens. You can't have a good season every season. Uh, I've got a little bit of momentum uh, behind me now and hopefully I can continue to build on that towards now and the end of the season. And looking back at last year, you won the title last year, of course. It was a, a big, long tussle with João Moreira. It was going back and forth, back and forth. You must have been absolutely thrilled. It must have been a long, enduring season, but to get that title must have been a great thrill for you. Yeah, of course. And it's just a reflection of uh, the support that you get um, from not just the trainers, but from the owners here as well. They're, they're very important. In this environment, they have a big say in what goes on. And, you know, if, if I'm given the opportunities and, uh, you know, get on the right horses at the right time, then it makes my job easier. And, you know, hopefully I can continue to get the support that I've been getting. I mean, talking about the lockdown situation, in terms of the UK over here, we've been quite fortunate with the racing where it's not really changed too much. And jockeys and stable staff and trainers have lived basically a normal life. And the outside world hasn't really affected us too much. But what's the situation like in Hong Kong? I mean, are you is it is it very tight, the restrictions, or are they quite uh, lenient towards you being elite sportsman? Uh, the jockey club are tighter on us than um, what the, the average everyday person would be in society. So in society... Um, the restaurant's only allowed two people at a table at the moment and they close at 6pm at night. Um, there's no golf courses, no tennis, no swimming, no sport at all. Um, the city basically is, um, you know, not, not in a lockdown, but everyone is, is uh, trying to remain uh, as socially distanced as possible. But on top of that, the jockey club uh, are not allowing us to go out and do anything at all. So we can't go to any cafes, restaurants, bars, hotels. We're not allowed to mix with owners. Uh, we're actually not allowed to mix with anyone outside our own household uh, at the moment, which is quite tough, uh, considering we all live in the same building. Um, but a- against that, I get to go to work every day, so I'm riding the horses, still going to the races. We still race every meeting, uh, and that's the most important thing. The only exercise we are allowed to go out and do is, is go hiking, because that's, uh, that's deemed to be outdoors, and uh, as long as we don't mix with other people. Uh, which can, you know, be a little bit tricky because you, you're walking on the same path uh, at times. But, um, you know, we, you can't completely lock yourself inside. Uh, and we understand the position the club's in. We're happy to play uh, by those rules because at the end of the day, the bigger picture is that we get to continue racing. I mean, look at your career in Hong Kong so far. Over 1,000 Hong Kong wins. And also you managed to finally complete the full set of Group 1s in Hong Kong with 12. To complete the full set must have been a relief for you to get that final piece in the jigsaw and complete the full set of 12. Yeah, it's extremely satisfying. Uh, and to use that w- word uh, reflected again, it's, it just illustrates how much uh, support and, and um, I've been given and the opportunities I've been given since I've been here. I've ridden some fantastic horses, uh, won a lot of big races. I've been very lucky, um, but it, it is rewarding and very satisfying that to be able to sit here and know that I've, I've won every big race um, that's on offer. And, you know, I suppose my job now is to try and win every one of them again. I mean, look at some of the best sources you've ridden in Hong Kong. I wanted to start with um, Aero Velocity, a, a really good sprinter. I think you won the Hong Kong Sprint as an eight-year-old in 2016. He's won two Hong Kong Sprints, a Centenary Sprint Cup too. What was he like for you as a horse to ride? He must have been an absolute aeroplane to ride over the, over the, the flying distances at, at Hong Kong. Yeah, he was very aggressive. Uh, he was a very difficult horse um, to have anything to do with. I never rode him in track work. Um, and when I rode him in barrier trials on race day, I basically had to get on him as he was can- uh, trotting and, ba- and nearly cantering along because he wouldn't stand still. He, he broke one of his um, stable hands arms, another one's collarbone. Uh, he'd run mul- multiple people into fences. He had a very aggressive nature about him. But once I got him out onto the track, he wasn't too bad to handle. He was a bit tricky in the gates. Uh, one time he, he reared straight up as the gates opened and nearly took my head out um, off, off the crossbar. Um, so he, he wasn't uh, easy to deal with, but he put all of that aggression into his racing. Uh, he was a big, strong horse um, that used all his muscle, all his spirit, uh, all his energy into, into explosive um, performances. And he, he took me around the world. We 
We won in Japan, which is not easy to do. It's still the only foreign horse to win that race that he won in Japan. Uh, and then we won in Singapore as well. So he won uh, three group ones in three different countries in, in the year. And no other Hong Kong's been a uh, Hong Kong trained horse has been able to do that. I mean, looking back in 2012, I think I, I first really noticed you at Ascot in 2012, Little Bridge in the King's Stand. What was it like for Hong Kong to come over to Royal Ascot, the UK? It's a magnificent week, Ascot, but to win one of our big sprints with, with Little Bridge and beat some of our best sprinters, it must have been a, a massive victory for the, whole, for the whole of Hong Kong. Yeah, it was, and it was something that I didn't quite uh, grasp at the time um, when we were first going over there to race in that race. It wasn't until I come back that, you know, the whole of Hong Kong was was very proud of what their horse was able to do over there on one of the world's biggest stages in front of the Queen uh, with everything that comes with it. It's a unique meeting um, and a, it's a performance that's still spoken about today. I mean, what, what was your opinion on British racing at Ascot? Was you quite impressed with how the, the British public are with racing? Was it a sort of different experience for you compared to Australia and Hong Kong? Um, it sort of reminded me a little bit more of Australia, uh, where people get dressed up, they enjoy the day at the races, they have a few drinks, they uh, they get a little bit loose, they have a punt. Um, you know, that's that's quite refreshing because here in Hong Kong, the racing can sometimes be quite um, punter orientated and uh, not so much about the fashion. Um, and uh, and you know, getting on the drink and enjoying the day uh, as such. So that that was good to see, but to see people dressed up in top hats and tails and things like that. That was different. Um, but to be able to experience racing over there and go to Ascot myself, um, you know, you always hear about uh, these different tracks and these different meetings around the world. But until you, you're able to go there and experience it for yourself, you get a completely different understanding of what it's about. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's the only ride I've had in the UK. So uh, up until now, I keep telling everyone I'm unbeaten. So once the pandemic eventually clears away, would coming to, to Great Britain, would that be something you want to do? We've seen Vincent Ho a couple of years ago. He came over for a little stint in, in Scotland, in the north of England. So would that be something that perhaps you might want to try and try before you eventually end your riding career? Yeah, it's always in the back of my mind. Um, I'd love to go and try um, riding on the different tracks that you have there, a different racing style. Um, it's something that uh, I am attracted to. And if I was given the right opportunity, I'd certainly try and take it. I have been invited on a number of occasions to ride the Shergar Cup, but I just think after the long season that we've had here in Hong Kong, I prefer to use our off season to have a freshen up and have a bit of a break. So it would uh, it would need to fall right for me, and I'd need to have the right opportunity. But it is something that uh, that does interest me. I mean, looking back in December, I think it was the International Hong Kong Jockeys Championship. We had so many jockeys, well, not so many, but a handful of jockeys from around the world come over, including the likes of Ollie Doyle and Tom Marquand from, from over here in Great Britain. You won the championship. What was that whole experience like for you to ride against some of our perhaps best jockeys in, in Great Britain as well? Yeah, it's great. It's great to see those riders come over here, and especially the the young riders that you've mentioned that are coming through the ranks. I've, I've watched them from afar. Obviously, Tom has done very well in Australia. Um, he's, he's got a good rapport with the people down there and um, to be able to ride against him and, and Holly and, and the rest of the team, um, you know, obviously Buick was here, Ryan, um, Sumion, Keir Charles, Budo, you know, the list goes on. It, it's always great riding against these riders. Um, you know, one thing that I always enjoy is, is testing myself against the best riders out there in the world, of course. I feel like I have a, a bit of an unfair advantage being here in Hong Kong because I know the track so well and I know the horses so well. Um, but it's still a great competition to be a part of. Uh, it lacked a little bit this year because, uh, uh, you know, there were no crowds there. But it was still a good competition and obviously I enjoyed it. Uh, it's great to win it again and, you know, hopefully we can invite all our fans back again next year. I mean, the, the, you mentioned about the crowd there. Do you think the crowd plays a big part in Hong Kong racing? Because over here in the UK, it, it's been a big miss. And the atmosphere in the UK, when we have Royal Ascot, we have the Guineas, all the classics, the Derby. Without the atmosphere, it was it was it was a big miss. And do you think that plays a huge part in the atmosphere of Hong Kong racing, having that huge crowd at Sha Tin or Happy Valley every week? Well, I do think so. And we've got to remember that part of what we do is supported by, uh, or a large part of what we do is supported by our fans and the punters and the people that support our support our, our sport. And we want them to be able to come to the races and, and enjoy it as much as what we do. And it's disappointing that they can't be there, but it is what it is. And Hopefully we can put this behind us soon enough and get back on to 
what's uh, what we can remember is a normal life. I mean, looking ahead to the weekend, the Exultants out, is declared to run in the Centenary Vars at the weekend. It's going to come up against a couple of tough horses. Fiore, of course, beat him twice was the back end of last season. But on the whole, how good has Exultant been for you in your career in Hong Kong? Uh, he's been phenomenal. He's been the best stayer, clearly, that I've ridden here in Hong Kong. Um, the way he's won some of his races, you know, he's basically just, just outstayed his opposition. He's got a great set of lungs, a great will to win. Uh, he's done things in races that a lot of horses can't. And he's got a terrific heart, and, and uh, I, I, I love him. Um, he's, he's been a really good horse to me. Obviously, he's in the twilight of his career now. His performances this season have not been as good as they were last season, but horses can't race on forever, and especially when he puts as much as he does into his racing, uh, you know, he leaves everything out there on the track, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit disappointing that he, for me, he's not at the level that he was, but, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll, we'll try and adapt and see if we can pinch another race on him. I'm looking back at some of his form before he went to Hong Kong. He's a horse we, we know well in the UK. He ran in Ireland. He finished third in an Irish Guineas behind Churchill in 2017. So what was your first impressions of him when you first come over to Hong Kong? Oh, he, he was light. He was wiry. Uh, he was like a whippet. There was nothing of him. He had a, a bit of an awkward head carriage. He'd get his tongue out. Uh, he's very one pace. He, he, uh, he struggled through his four-year-old season to be competitive. Um, but I always felt like there was something there, and I always thought that he would develop into a, a horse uh, as a five-year-old when he come back the next season, and he was able to do that. He took the next step. He settled into a, um, the environment here, which is not easy to do. Our tracks are like cement, so he's, his legs had to get used to the firm ground. Uh, but once it clicked with him, uh, it, it really clicked, um, and he's, he's as hard as the ground he runs on. I mean, look at the race itself. We mentioned about Furore, who beat him a couple of times towards the end of last season as well. Columbus County's in the race, and I read an article this morning that Casper Founds is looking to target some of the staying races this season in Hong Kong. So how would you assess Exultant's chances? I mean, he's got a bit of a, bit of a point to prove from last season. Uh, yeah, I, I think you made a good point there. Um, you know, his three runs uh, in this season, he's run second in all of them, and uh, he's been soundly beaten in all of them. Uh, he never really looked like the winner. Uh, and he comes up against Fiore again, who's clearly at his measure this season. So uh, he needs to bring his best. Um, you know, he's going to be in the right spot. He's going to give himself every chance to win. Uh, and he's, st he's still, in some respects, the benchmark. Um, they still have to produce their best to be able to beat him. Um, but Fiore's uh, going to give us... We've got to give him weight, um, as we do Columbus County. And that's not easy to do in these handicap races. So they do have the advantage there, but they've still got to bring their best. I mean, looking back in the Hong Kong bars in 2018, it was a really hot renewal. We beat Lee Scrasio, who's a superstar in Japan, some very good European horses too. Was that the sort of time when you really thought he announced himself on the Hong Kong stage as a horse and a real force to be reckoned with? Oh, for sure. That was a fantastic field that he beat in that race, and there was no fluke with what he did. Um, you know, he beat a subsequent arc winner as well. So, you know, there's plenty of depth to, to, to that race, and... Um, you know that 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 was when he was at his best. Uh, that season he he was uh, he was fantastic. Um, if I could have him in that form every season, uh, you know I'd be a very happy man. I'm looking back at the Hong Kong Cup as well. You won the Hong Kong Cup on Normcore. You beat a very good mare of ours in the UK, Magical. Aidan O'Brien thinks the world of her, and she's now retired, but she was a superstar race mare. And she beat uh, Gayath, who's now the world's greatest, highest-rated racehorse. But for you on Normcore, it was a good opportunity with Christoph, Christoph Simeon having a bit of trouble with the coronavirus tests. Yeah, well, I was a little bit lucky there. Uh, originally, I thought I was booked for her. And then uh, a few days later, when Simeon was announced to be coming, they changed their mind and put him on, which... You know, they're entitled to do that's That's fair enough. Um, they thought he was the best rider for the horse. But unfortunately for me, when he had the hiccup with the uh, the uh, irregular COVID test, um, you know, he, he wasn't able to come to the races. And therefore, I got back on her and made the most of it. And, you know, it's uh, it's great to be able to win that race again. Um, it, was, it was a great performance. It was only a small field, but it was, it was a strong race. Um, and it, it's been rated the best race in Hong Kong. Uh, in the pre previous year by the, the World Horse Racing uh, Authority or whoever they are that that, uh, that rate these races. So 
it was a it was a solid performance. Um, and uh, yeah, I was I was just lucky to be in the right spot, right time, I suppose. What she liked to ride as a horse in Ormcourt. She had, looked like she had a fantastic finishing kick that day. But what was the whole race like during that period? Did it pan out for you as, as you hoped, or did it go slightly wrong? Or uh, I, was, I was in the position I thought I would be in, um, and the the pace of the race was genuine enough for me. But she pulled really, really hard. Um, I had an awful amount of trouble just trying to get her to settle and get her to relax and, and keep her in that position throughout the whole race. Let's not forget uh, that the start before in Japan, she led over 2200 by about 10 lengths she took off took charge of the jockey so she had that in her mind and she wanted to do that again so i was wrestling with her the whole race um and and i actually thought halfway through the race she'd she'd done too much she fought me too much to be able to finish uh but i was wrong she uh she showed great heart in the straight once she was in that position to win she wanted to win and she got it done i mean i have to talk about beauty beauty generation as well one of the best horses Hong Kong's ever seen. He had his retirement ceremony at the weekend. He spoke very uh, passionately about him and what he's done for you. I mean, where can I begin with him? He's a horse who's achieved so much, but for you, he must have been an absolute superstar in your career. Yeah, well, where do you begin and where do you end? He's done everything in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, he, he set the record for the most prize money uh, ever won by a horse in Hong Kong, $106 million. Uh, he won 18 races. It's the equal most amount of any horse in Hong Kong. Uh, he won eight group ones. Uh, I believe that's uh, a record as well. Um, although no one can firmly tell me if that's a record or not because the group one races over time have been um, added and subtracted. So it's, it's a little bit iffy, but no one can say that uh, another horse has won that many group one races. So we'll put him up there uh, as doing that. He once held three track records. He still holds two. Um, and he went through the 2018 season. Uh, sorry, he went through the 2018 nine season uh, unbeaten. He was the first horse to win eight races in a season. Uh, so you know, he's done everything. Uh, he, he was in Hong Kong terms, he was a champion. Uh, you know, I'd never ridden a horse of his caliber um, over a consistent period of time before in my career. Uh, I'm glad he'd come along and. I'll probably never ride another one like him. I mean, the most interesting part of his career was we don't normally see with most champions. They seem to have that sort of champion's edge from the start of their career. But with future generation, it just took a little little bit longer for him to really find his feet in Hong Kong and, and develop into a champion. And that's one of the unique uh, things about racing here in Hong Kong is we purchase a lot of um, horses that have, have already raced overseas. So we call them PPs. Um, and he come in as one of them. And when they come in, they've got to acclimatise, they've got to settle in, they've got to get used to the stabling environment, the tracks that they work on, uh, the hardness of the surface, the speed of the races. You know, there's a lot of things for them um, to have to learn to adapt. And some horses take a little bit of time, but the, the best ones work it out. And obviously he was in that category. I mean, looking back at last season as well, he ran to a, to good form last season. He was touched off in the Champions Mile quite narrowly. But was there always the thought in the, back, if you, in the back of your head that perhaps retirement is going to be the best thing for him? Or was the best oh, thing for yeah, him? Oh, yeah, of course. And, and you never want to see a, a good horse race uh, beyond um, their expiry date. And I think the owners uh, tested the water, um, and rightly so, uh, after he had a couple of defeats, just to make sure that he still had that will to win. And he, and he did come out and win again. And he showed us at the, at the end of last season he was still competitive. He got beat a nose in a Group 1 race. And then you come back this season, and, you know, the, the younger horses are coming through and his old legs just couldn't quite carry him as much. And he didn't get beat far. He's only get, been getting beat a length and a half, two lengths. Uh, so he wasn't disgracing himself. Um, and I think the owners decided to, to retire him at the right time. I mean, at the peak of his powers in 2018, it must have felt like he was going riding a horse. It was invincible at the peak of his powers in 2018, especially in Champion Smile. It must have been a... Like you must have felt like he was ten feet tall on a horse on a horse who was at the peak of his powers and never looked like he was really getting beat at the time. No, it was cer certainly felt that way to me. Uh, I used to go out there on the track and and in my mind it didn't matter what happened. He, he was just going to win and he was an easy horse to ride. He always begun well. He loved to lead, so I used to just throw the reins at him, let him go whatever speed he wanted to go, uh, and he just did the rest. He he was a machine. He was like a Rolls Royce. He used to just bully his, his opposition into the ground. And I, I could just feel the confidence in him. He, he, uh, he just gave me a, a, such a special feel. 
uh, it's very hard to describe. But um, yeah, when he, when he, when he was at uh, at the top, he was he was just different. I mean, looking at Hong Kong now, there appears to be a new superstar on the ranks in Golden 60. You rode against him at the weekend on Kai Ying Star. And what impressed me the most about Golden 60 was his turn of foot. But riding against him, what's that like to ride against such a good horse who's got such a devastating turn of speed at the end of a race? Well, it's hard to beat because uh, it doesn't matter if you go slow or fast, uh, he still wins. Um, if you go fast, he, he just gobbles you up. If you go slow, he, he out sprints you anyway. And from the 400 to the 200, he can't just comes in at the race on the bit like he's doing it effort, effortlessly, uh, which he is, and then he just puts us away. But I got a really cheap lead on the weekend, and I thought I'm going to try and drag his sprint out of him. So a half mile from home, I started up in the ante, and 600 from home, I really put the pedal down, and I made him chase. Uh, and he had to dig deep. He only just got up in the last couple of strides. So I tested him, uh, but he was too good. I want to talk about King Shield as well, horse who's the highest rated dirt horse in, in Hong Kong, rate 109. I was reading during the week, there's talk for him possibly looking go, to go to Dubai for the Godolphin Mile. Would he be a horse who you think would hold his own against some of the European best dirt horses in Dubai on World Cup night? Yeah, possibly if he was at his best. Uh, when I won on him on the dirt uh, a few starts back, he, he was unbelievable. He was brilliant. And then I rode him again uh, 10 days ago on the dirt. Um, and he'd had a tough run the start before. I, I wasn't on him, but he got uh, knocked around and and uh, nearly come down. And I think he was still had some ill effects from that. Uh, he couldn't quite stretch out properly. So his last performance is, is not a true reflection of um, his ability on the dirt. But he, if he gets over there in his best form, I think he can run well. And also in Hong Kong, you have the barrier trials. Talk to me about them, because in the UK, we don't have them. We just have the work at home. It's all very private in, in, in the UK, where, whereas on the track in Hong Kong, you're doing your barrier trials, and, and the press get to really see how they're working, whereas in the UK, it's all very private. So what's that sort of like, riding in the barrier trials during the, in, in preparation for the bigger races? Yeah, so we use them for two things, of course. For the younger horses, we use them to educate them um, without the pressure of being in a race. And then for the older horses, it's just to keep their fitness up to a certain level. Um you know, it's you're still trying to get everything right. You want them to begin well. You want them to to be comfortable with uh, in amongst all the other runners. Go through their their stride nicely. Change legs. You know, you're just, you're just trying to um, perfect what you want to want what you want them to do on race day. And um, you know, they're they're a tool that we use to. to sorry about that. That's to okay. Pedal, uh, for, uh, for race day and, and, and you know, they, I, I find it quite good, especially for the young horses. I mean, looking at some of the Hong Kong superstars as well, was there ever that incentive to bring them over to Europe or around the world, especially in the UK, where, where prize money's perhaps at the moment not at its best, and in Hong Kong the prize money's really good? So was that always a big incentive to keep your superstars back at home rather than take them towards the UK, potentially run the risk of, of not really running for, for great prize money and, and something potentially happen? Yeah, that's that's one of the criticisms that uh, is always echoed amongst the owners and the trainers here. You know, they they, they think why travel all the way up there to the UK um, on tracks that are unfamiliar, on really soft ground, uh, a lot of the times, um, and and race for lesser prize money when it's easy just to to stay here, stay in your environment, stay in your routine, race for good prize money, uh, and also the owners can take their friends to the races, obviously not at the moment, but they can take their friends to the races and they can enjoy it amongst the community. And it's finally for you for the rest of the season. Can you see yourself catching Jan Morera? Of course, he's a fantastic jockey and last season was a very long tussle, as you mentioned before. But can you see it happening this season to try and retain your jockey's crown? Uh, I think it's going to be difficult this season. Uh, he's got all the support at the moment. The trainers he's riding for are flying. He obviously rides lighter than what I do, so I feel like um, the margin between us is probably a, little, a bridge a little bit too far. But you never know. I'll, I'll keep cracking on. Um, you know, the wind can can change quickly sometimes, and you know, you, you never know. If I, if I can get within ten winners of him at some stage, it, it makes it interesting. But I've got uh, I've got my work cut out for me. Brilliant, Zach. Thank you so much. That was really good. It's a pleasure.